Welcome to our Vineyard Live experience. We're so glad that you're joining us today. I'm Pastor Sharon, and I'm going to continue in this series, Not Afraid. You know, this past couple of months, uh, the world has just been turned upside down, right? I mean, all of us are trying crazy to make sure that we follow the CDC guidelines, right, so that we can reduce the, the spread of the pandemic. And we have just sat back and watched our government spend trillions and trillions of dollars trying to help people uh, to deal with the economic shutdown that we're in. And the past couple of weeks, we've watched people be at their throats as every state is trying to figure out what does it look like to reopen, right? And for many of us, we just kind of sat back, deep breathed, and went, oh, gosh, I wonder what the new normal is going to be like. And I wonder how we're going to be able to function in that new normal And then if we're real honest, some of us just take a a look and we think, well, what is our future going to look like? Well, today I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about your future and God's faithfulness. Would you bow your heads with me? And uh, I'm just going to open this portion with prayer. Just bow your heads right where you're at. Father God, I thank you that you send the Holy Spirit in his power, Father. And that that power is not uh, impeded by electronics, that you just go right through. And so I ask that you would touch every heart Father, every person that hears this message, and that Holy Spirit, you would do what only you can do, which is to come in and to talk to the inner man. You say you know every hair on our head, Lord, and we're counting on you today, Father, to just pour out your spirit upon your people and uh, cause them to see in a new light. And so I give you this message, and I give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, as I had said, the stress uh, of the pandemic is, is not decreasing, but almost increasing weekly with all these tri- you know, twists and turns. And we're trying to figure out how do you swim, how do you navigate in this, this time, right? Well, there's a scripture in the Word of God in Psalm 34, 4, and it says this. It says, I sought the Lord I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And so answers are always found in the word of God. And so that's where we need to go. So today I want you and I to go and to look into the word of God and see what does it say to us about our future? What are those truths that uh, God wants us to be reminded of? And so the first thing I want to do is looking at uh, what God says about your future is that I want you to know that God knows everything you're going through. God knows everything you're going through, right? Like sometimes I think we get tempted to think, you know, like all this stuff that's happened around us, maybe God just like fell asleep or went out to lunch, right? And he got back and he goes, whoa, dang, Skippy, you didn't see that one coming, (laughs) right? And the whole world is kind of in chaos. But yet scripture tells us that's not true. Matter of fact, in Hebrews 4.13, it says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before his eyes. And so it's talking about the character of God that he's always present, right? That he is in the past, he's in this present, and he's in our future. And so it's talking about the totality of who God is. He doesn't go out to lunch. He doesn't get caught off guard, right? It's kind of like, it reminds me, uh, like our Neptune Festival that we have, right? Uh, in September, beautiful Neptune Festival down here at the beach. And, and so they take the three miles of the boardwalk, and there's all kinds of stuff. And if you and I were to walk uh, down on the boardwalk during the festival, all we could see is perhaps what's in front of us or what we just passed, right? But if you and I were to get into a balloon and we would go up really high, then you and I could see the whole expanse of the beginning and the end of that art show, right? The, the beginning and the end of the Neptune Festival. We'd be able to see the sand castle and all the food vendors and the, you know, the volleyball players, right, that play on the beach, and we would be able to see, uh, you know, the exhibits and everything. Well, that's like God. God can see everything. He sees the whole expanse of what's going on, and so we need to keep that in our mind because that's the truth about our future, that God sees it all. You know, the second thing that the Word of God says is that even though he sees all these things, uh, he doesn't move to change them right? Why is that? Because he gives us free choice. And that's the second thing I want to talk to you about, that God allows free choice. 
He gives you free choice. You know, you could go back to the beginning of scriptures, and what you're going to see is that when God created you, he created you in his likeness, and he gave you and I free choice or that we could choose whether to love him or to reject him, whether to listen to his word or to ignore it, right? God gives us this ability to have free will. And in that, though, comes the consequences of our choices, And it doesn't take anybody long when you're reading the Word of God and looking at the Old Testament to see how the nature, the human nature, when it overtakes, it has this propensity to to bend into being able to, uh, uh, into sinfulness, right? It wants to pursue things like power and prestige and positions and possessions, and it goes after those things, right? That's what the choices of humankind goes after, and we see that in the Old Testament And it's not just an Old Testament truth. To be honest with you, isn't that what's happening now with the pandemic? I mean, didn't it get started because of man's desire to to be more powerful, to be more influential, right? To not talk responsibility after, you know, after uh, making some poor decisions, right? And, and, And letting the pandemic just kind of roll out. So we see the sinful of mankind and all its glory in this pandemic. Well, you know what? Again, God was not caught off guard. He knew about the coronavirus. He knew what man would do with that, right? And so we need to know that, uh, that, that Christ sees that, and he knows what our free choice would do. And so that's why he's provided us a freedom, a way out, and that's called his son, Jesus Christ. You see, God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the scripture that we have in John 3, 16. That scripture, it's about Jesus coming to earth. It's about Jesus living the life that you and I couldn't live and dying the death that you and I should have died, but we don't have to. It's about reuniting us with the heavenly father. It's about overcoming the propensity towards sin because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. You know, this whole idea of free choice is that you can hear this message and you can still choose to accept it or reject it. He always gives you that ability because that's what love is. Love gives choice, right? And so for many of you listening to me today, you might not have this close, intimate relationship with Father God through his son, Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, that's why God had you listening to this, this lady talking today, because he's calling you home. He wants you to make that choice to come and to be part of his family, right? You know, when we choose to follow after Jesus Christ, what happens is we accept the gift of salvation and forgiveness, but we also ask Jesus to be the leader of our life. And you know the very next thing that the Bible tells us about our future is that God has a plan for our future. That's right. God has a plan for our future. He, he was there when, when uh, he saw you knitted together in your mother's womb. He saw you be informed, and, and he gave you all these gifts and talents, and he gave you the shape you have, the personality you have, right? And then he ordained where you would be even born because he knew all those things would come together and they would play themselves out so that you can fulfill the, the uh, purpose that God has given you, Right? And we see that in Jeremiah 29, 11, that famous uh, scripture that says that I know the plans, this is God speaking, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a, a hope and a future. You see, that's what God wants to do. He's got these plans for you and I, and, and we just need to line up our lives to follow after them. You know, for me, I tell you, when I grew up as a kid, I hated school. I had such a hard time learning, Um, so struggled, many tears, many wondering, God, why is this so hard for me, right? And so I struggled like crazy, and it was in that that educational setting that I found this love-hate relationship because I loved to learn new things, but I sure did hate that system that kept telling me that I'd never measure up, that I was dumb, right? It took such a toll on my my, uh, self-worth, right, and even questioning my future. It wasn't until I was a young adult that I began to realize that God had something extraordinary in mind for me, right? I learned that the difficulties I had were due to ADHD and having a learning disability, right? I I learned that, and then right behind that information came this knowledge of Jesus was calling me, and so I accepted him as my savior. I asked him to be the leader of my life, and then we began this journey of self-discovery, and when I found out that Jesus healed, I asked him, I said, can you heal me of this learning difficulty? 
And you know what the Lord said? He gave me a scripture. He said, no, Sharon, I'm going to do something better for you. I'm going to give you the uncommon gift. This uncommon gift, as he describes it, it's in my weakness that I become oh so very powerful and strong. And so God took this, uh, this difficulty I was having and he actually molded it in to the purpose he had for my life. You see, I am now going into my 60s and I can look back in my life and I can honestly tell you that it was during the struggles and the, and the following after Christ that I begin to become the woman of God that speaks to you today right? This woman who is just a fierce leader, who's a fierce leader of, of, uh, of peoples, and, and I've got these capacities to see solutions that other people can't see. I also have this ability inside, um, you know, uh, to be able to sense what's going on in the room and to feel the hearts of people and to know the angst that they have and then to call out their very best. See, these things I'm talking about and so much more were all birthed in the struggle and walking with my Lord. And so I want to encourage you that no matter where you are, that God has a plan for your life. And believe me, my friends, it is for good. It's not for evil. And it's going to bring you a hope, and it's going to bring you a future. That's his promise. So when we line up with what the Word of God tells us about how God views our future, right, that he knows everything that's going on, that he's going to give you and I free choice to choose things, and that he has even got a plan for us if we want to follow that, but we can choose to or not. When we actually choose to that and start following it happen, what happens is, oh my gosh, God opens up the promises. All these promises for your future start to begin to happen, and you begin to realize that you can call upon him. You can lean into him. You can depend on him because he's going to be there for you. Here's three things I want to show you how you can uh, depend on him. The first one is that God is going to be there to guide you. He's going to guide you when you're confused. Now, as I said We've had to uh, make a lot of changes in our lives, and a lot more are going to have to be made. You're going to have to decide, you know, whether you shelter in place or you go back to work. You're going to have to decide, do you let your kids, your precious children, go back into a daycare situation? You're going to have to decide, do you get on a flight and fly out to somebody that you care about, right? Or you're even going to have to decide, are you going to come back in, in person when the church opens up, or do you need to shelter in place and just keep watching online? All these decisions, and with all these decisions, what happens is the angst inside of us begins to just uh, unglued. We become unglued, right? Well, here's what I want you to do. When that starts to happen to you, I want you to stop. I don't want you to bend into those emotions. Rather, I want you to stop, and I want you to say, come Holy Spirit, Come and help me. You see, he promises us that he will guide us, right? His word in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my favorites, says this. If we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and if we lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways, if we acknowledge him, he promises us that he'll direct us, that he will show us the pathway to righteousness, that he will speak individually to you what you need to be doing during this pandemic time. You see, the decisions that have to be made, he wants to yoke himself with you to help guide you. You know, the word also tells us that we can depend on God, not just to guide us, but to support us. That God wants to support us, especially when we feel overwhelmed, right? You know, this past week, Pastor Andy had to fly out. Uh, and so he was gone. That meant I had the, the front, the home front. I had the, you know, the church front. I was t- I'm taking care of all those, and I'm juggling. And boy, what a week I've had. What a week. You know, earlier this week, uh, uh, my computer just, uh, just crashed, right? It just crashed. That meant I lost my message. I lost all my materials. I didn't even have a computer. Of course, everything's still locked up around here. You can't even get one quick right? And so that sent me into panic. And then I had two huge projects I was trying to manage at home, and I'd be dead on if both of them with the contractors, they fell apart, right? And I'll tell you, it, it, after one hit after another, um, it started to take its toll on me. I couldn't even sleep at night. And of course, when I can't, when I get bothered, I clean, which, which is not a bad thing. So I started cleaning my house, was up to wee hours of the morning, you know, and I get up the next day, I take my shower and you know, I start drying my hair, and all of a sudden, tears start coming down my face. And I, I was like, wow. See, the pressure stays with us. It doesn't relieve, right? And I just thought, at that moment, I thought, oh, my gosh. How, how very, um, 
lonely I feel, how very burdensome I feel. But you know, all the years of, of teaching, it reminded me to go to the Father. So I cried out. I said, God, come and help me. Tell me, what do I do? What, what, what's going to happen here? I need you so very much. And you know, the Lord uh, reminded me of this scripture. It's in Isaiah 43, 2 through 3. Well, I have my notes that are uh, on your chat there. You can go and look at those. Isaiah 43, two, verses 2 and 3. This is huge. It says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Thank you, Lord. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not burn up, for I am the Lord your God. You know, when God spoke that to me, it just breathed new life into me. I was like, oh, yes, Lord, yes, right? You know, I know there are many of you guys, and you're facing some really huge issue. Yeah, the issues in your life. You might have gotten a, a doctor who talked to you, and, and their prognosis, you don't even know whether to believe it or not, and you're looking, you're going, what does that mean for my future, Right? And there's some of you, you've gone now weeks, almost months without a job and your bills are piling up and you're going, oh my gosh, I'm going to drown here, right? You feel completely overwhelmed. And then there's others that your life is <laughs> turned up so much, upside down, that you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to get out of bed and fight depression. I'm just trying to, trying to make sure that, that I, 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 I move beyond the fatigue I feel from all my disruption that has happened in my life. Well, I want you to know that God is there to support you. He's there for you. Why? Because he loves you. And his promise to you is, he says, depend on me, and I'm going to support you in that difficult place. You know, I just told you that my computer crashed, and it took down uh, all my notes, my message, and so I, I meant I had to rewrite everything that I'm talking to you today about. But what Satan meant for evil, God used for good, because it was in that time when I was rewriting, right, what my message, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and this last point comes out of what he showed me, okay? And it's this, that God wants to grow our faith. That God wants to grow our faith. That's another thing we can depend on him, to grow our faith, right? You see, God is not so interested in our comfort as much as he is in our, our, our ability to grow to be up like him, right? To learn to love him with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and with all our strength. And so that's what God's interested in. That's what he wants, and for you to love other people. And to that end, he's always developing our faith to believe and to walk into the fullness of that. You know, I read this uh, parable in Luke 13, 6, 6 through 9. And I'll just tell you what it's about. In this parable that Jesus tells, he tells about a farmer who comes out into his garden. And uh, as he's looking at his garden, he goes over to the fig tree and he wants to eat a fig and the fig tree hasn't produced any fruit. And so he yells for the gardener who attends the garden and he, he calls him over and he says, hey, this fig tree hasn't produced figs in three years. You know what, just let's dig it up and throw it away. It's not even worth the soil that it's taking up. And yet the gardener looked and said, please, sir, allow me to tend it. Allow me to, you know, to, uh, to dig around it and allow me to put fertilizer on it. And if it doesn't produce in another year, I'll dig it up, right? And so as I was reading that, then the father began to, to talk to me. He says, Sharon, this is how I see. See, the father God is the farmer who came out into the garden, and he looks at your life and my life, and he wants to see it producing fruit, right? Producing the fruit. And you might be asking yourself, what fruit is she talking about? Well, in Galatians 5, and 23, it says, right, the fruit of the Spirit is, you can even say it with me, it's love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See, these are the fruit that God wants to see us in the unique uh, dimension and the unique calling that he has on our lives. He wants to be able to taste this fruit in our lives, right? And so he's wanting us to do that. And here you go. The Lord was showing me that as the gardener comes, that the gardener is the Holy Spirit, and he comes into our lives, right? And he wants to do two things because you and I perhaps are not producing the fruit like we should be. And so he's looking at us going, I'm going to help. The Holy Spirit says, I'm going to help them. And so 
what he does is he comes in and he does the two things that the gardener did. He wants to dig around the plant, right? And then he wants to fertilize us. Well, in this, I see that digging around the plant, you might be going like, what does that have anything to do with anything? Well, I'm a gardener. And what I know is when you dig around the plant, right, and you disrupt the uh, soil around it that was impacted and was so tight and you start to loosen it up, right? And then you stimulate the, the roots and you what they call aerate it. And so now there's a richness that begins to happen in the soil, right? And so the plant is beginning to thrive because of that. And then if you put fertilizer in there, you give it its nutrition, and it really helps the plant to become all that it can be. Now, here you go. For us, for us, God is digging around our lives, and it's uncomfortable. He's using the pandemic. He's using that, but he's aerating us. He's digging around so that our roots would be exposed, that we would begin to understand that he is interested very much so in how we're running our life. What are our values? What are our priorities? How do we treat family members? You see, he's interested in all those things, right? And so he's exposing them to the elements so that we would begin to expand our ability to be able to grow out from there. And then the Holy Spirit said, don't forget the fertilizer. You see, the fertilizer is God's word. Now here's why it's so very important, this fertilizer. This fertilizer is the only book, the only information that can transform your thinking, that can take your eyes off of the world and put it on God's economy, can put it on what God has to say. And so you and I, we need to know what the word says. We need to allow it to fertilize the soul, the person that we are. You see, in my reading, the Lord was showing me, you and I, we want to focus on the pandemic and all the things. But God says, no, take your focus, focus on me. For what I want to do in your life is mighty and it is great. And I'm giving you a time, a time on this. He says, within one year, I want them producing fruit. And so I felt very compelled to share that story with you because God wants to do something extraordinary in your life. He was doing something extraordinary right now. Do you believe that? Well, you have to know the truth of what the Word of God says about your future. And you got to know that you can depend on Him to support you, to help you, right? To uplift you and to, to follow after Him for the plan He has for you. Now bow your heads with me and I'm going to close our time in prayer. Father God, you are so faithful. I thank you for this word. And Holy Spirit, I know just as I'm praying, I hear there are many that do not know me, Sharon. And so for those of you that do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your, your moment. This is your moment to stop and to say, I want that. I want what that lady's talking about. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now. And all you have to do is repeat after me. Because I'm going to leave you in a prayer. Just repeat after me. Just say, Father God, go ahead and say it right where you're at, right on that couch. That's right, right on that lawn chair. You just say, Father God, I want what that woman's talking about. I'm coming home. Forgive me for my sins. Help me, Father, to choose right. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior. And I ask you, Jesus, to lead me from this point forward. Yeah, from this point forward. Now, Father God, for those that were praying that prayer, I thank you that you seal it in their heart and that you've written their name in the book of life. And Father, you said that we had one year to be able to, um, to get our, our lives, Father, in a way that we would accept the nourishment and that we begin to grow mightily, Father, that many people can eat out of the fruit of our tree of our life. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you continue to work in those folks that had ears to hear what your spirit was saying today. And I thank you that you love us and that you're mindful and that you're always there for us. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, I sure did enjoy being with you guys today. It's been a delight. And I want to encourage you. Uh, right now, I want to encourage you to continue to, to walk in the fullness of the gospel of God, right? And to know the, what the word says. And for those of you that gave your life to Jesus Christ, let me say this. There's gonna be a pastor on in a moment that tell you what to do next, but I want you to tell me about it. <laughs> I want you to tell me why. So that I can send you a letter to encourage you and I can send you a book to help you with now what? What are my next steps? So you wanna pay attention and do what that pastor asks you to do in just a moment. 
And for those of you that have partnered up with us with the uh, giving to this ministry financially, well, I can't tell you how, how, what a blessing it's been, right? Because of your generosity, we've not only been able to help the people in Hampton Roads, but we've also been a light to the Mid-Atlantic region that we've been called to lead. And it's all because you've partnered up with us and, and your faithfulness. And for those of you, uh, let me remind you the four ways that you can give. First, you can just hit that give button if you're watching Vineyard online, right? And if you, the second way is you can text the 45777 uh, and then type in there VCC and then the amount you want to give. And then, of course, you can always go on our website and look at the giving page there at vineyardchurch.com. And lastly, one of my favorites <laughs> is you can always send a check, right? Hey, listen. We love you dearly. We appreciate you. And I so look forward to the day when I might be able to see you again. Be blessed. Thank you for joining us on our Vineyard Church stream. If you prayed that prayer with, we want to hear about it. We want to support you. We believe that it's the best decision that you can make. If you're on the Church Online platform, click that button that says, I committed my life. And that will take you to a Connect Card option where we will be able to send you information and support this new decision. If you're on Facebook, let us know in the chat or send us a private message. We would like to send you the same information. Hey, if you call Vineyard Church your home, you can actually give online right at our website, vineyardchurch.com, or you can text. You can text 45777-VCC plus the amount and give right there on your phone. We have been doing so much in our community. Just because the building is closed doesn't mean that we're not reaching out with our food pantry, financial resources, and giving people food gift cards so that they can eat during this season. If you'd like to support that, just click the COVID-19 option. And hey, we also want to pray for you. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send those in. We know it's a crazy time. We want to support you spiritually. You can send those right there on our website, vineyardchurch.com. Just click prayer. If you're on the Church Online platform, you can actually get live prayer right now by clicking the prayer button. You'll immediately be connected with one of our prayer team members who'd love to pray for you right now. Stay connected with us on social media. You can follow us at Vineyard VA on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But hey, we're doing this next week. We'll see you right here on this platform next week. Invite somebody out. We'll see you then.